Let's get this show on the road. The Denver Nuggets won game four against the Los Angeles Lakers, 113 to 111, to sweep them out of the Western Conference Finals and advance to their first NBA Finals as a franchise. It's over. It's over. Denver makes history. The Nuggets are going to the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history. I hope you all brought your popcorn because we have quite a thrilling game to talk about. The headline of this game, the king no more. Jokic is officially, as if he wasn't already, the best basketball player in the entire world. He's averaging a 30-point triple-double in the playoffs. He continues to come up big time after time after time. But he was not the best player in this game. He was sensational. He was phenomenal. But this was the swan song of one LeBron James. He puts up 40 points, 10 rebounds, 9 assists, year 20 in the loss. And I've got to say, guys, LeBron was heavily let down by his teammates. And we are going to talk about that in the entire game, plus what the NBA Finals might look like. But before we do, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Leave a like on the video. We're back with the reactions right after the game. I'm sorry that I missed the last few days. I uh, I had some business to take care of. And if you guys want to see it, I will give you a little show right here. Yep, that's what we were doing. Couldn't use my arm over the weekend. So anyway, we are back here. The, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. Drop a comment. Let me know if Jokic is the best basketball player in the world, in your opinion. He's got to be for me. He just simply has to be. And this is coming from somebody who took a while to get on board. But I do believe, and I have for a while, but as if I didn't already, this cements it. Okay, let's jump back into the game here. So Jokic finishes this, finishes this game with 30 points, 14 rebounds, and 13 assists. I bet on his under of 26 and a half points because 99% of the money was on his over. And usually when that happens, the, uh, the sports books win out, the 1% hits. So anytime I see bets like that, I usually just fade it. And so I ended up going with the under. It was on good pace to hit until Rui Hachimura decided to hit him in the face on a three-point shot. And he just made the wild circus step back shot that apparently seems to be from his hot spot now. But I'm not taking anything away from him. He was amazing. He actually ended up hitting the game winning shot. It wasn't at the buzzer on the final possession. So you might have forgotten about it. But he was able to truck his way past Anthony Davis and Dennis Schroeder on a rim run, get the ball in the cup and win his team the game and the series. I mentioned LeBron. I can't say enough about him. 21 points in the first quarter was four of four from three in the first quarter, despite shooting worse than 20% for most of these playoffs. He was just on another level. It was vintage LeBron. It was classic attacking the rim relentlessly. And then when we get into the third and the fourth quarter, a lot of people have problems with his lack of aggressiveness. And I've got to say, I understand those frustrations because it looked like he was the only source of offense on that team. But I think LeBron knew that, look, I can score 50 or 60 in this game, and we might win it, but what's the point if I can't get my teammates involved? We're not going to win this series. I think that he was trying to get his teammates involved. He did that pretty well for most of the third quarter. Again, I mentioned he ended up finishing with nine assists, but in the fourth quarter, I think he waited too long to assert himself. I thought that he had rested up and saved up enough energy. Again, he's in year 20. He's got more miles on his body than pretty much anybody, and if you can't criticize 40, 10, and 9 on what were his shooting splits. You can't criticize 40, 10, and 9 on 15 of 25 from the field, 4 of 7 from 3, 6 of 7 from the free throw line, only one turnover and only one foul with two steals. Just, It's just an incredible game. What's up, guys? This is actually post-edit Grant or mid-edit Grant. Just wanted to stop by because I realized that I failed to broach a conversation topic. Is this the last that we've seen of LeBron James? No, he is not going to retire. But do I think that this is the end of the great LeBron James? Unfortunately, I do. I think this is the end of a generation of LeBron James dominance. I think this is the end of LeBron James being a top 10 player in the NBA. Not that he won't have great games. Um, LeBron, Michael Jordan, his final game of his age 38 season, which is how old LeBron is now, he had two points, three rebounds, and three assists. But just two games before that, he had 34 points. Do I think LeBron still has him, that in him? And do I think he has more consistency than that sample from Jordan? Yes, I do. But I think he's going to be somewhere around a 26 and 6, 26 and 5 type guy. Maybe, maybe he can get another championship, but he's going to have to be the third or fourth best player on his roster. And it's probably not going to happen for another year or two. And I don't necessarily see it happening in LA. Maybe he teams up with his son and they both have stumbled their way onto a championship contender. Maybe the 
the Cleveland Cavaliers make a savvy draft pick of Bronny to end up reuniting LeBron. And he's got Donovan Mitchell and Garland and Allen and Mobley. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going the future is going to hold? But I do think that this is the end of LeBron James' reign of dominance in the NBA. Anyway, just want to slip that in. Let's get back to the regular scheduled programming. It's just an incredible game. And it was fitting in many ways that LeBron was let down by one of his co-stars, Anthony Davis. He finished this game with 21 points and 14 rebounds, but he was truly horrendous on offense for almost the entire game and really, really bad on defense until about halfway through the fourth quarter, and then he got a little bit better. But even still, it was LeBron switching on to Jokic in the big moments. It was LeBron singling out Jamal Murray on the defensive end and trying to take him out of the game again in the big moments, just a real one-on-one five show for most of the game. Austin Reeves was really good. Dennis Schroeder was really good. Tristan Thompson was the best big man in a Lakers uniform. Think He didn't appear in a single regular season game. He was averaging just over one minute per game in the playoffs. And he ends up playing, should have written it down. How much did he play? Tristan Thompson plays 10 minutes. He gets four points and a rebound, but he actually was really good on defense. He was a little too small for Jokic, but he was at least offering him some pushback and like Rui Hachimura. And he was doing a great job switching and recovering on Jamal Murray on the perimeter. It was really reminiscent of when he and Kevin Love were almost the primary defenders on Steph Curry in those Cavs Warriors finals. So good game from him. He tried his best. Aaron Gordon, huge different difference maker for the Nuggets. 22 points, goes three of five from three-point land, coming up and battling with a bunch, a bunch of boards on the offensive glass. Jamal Murray goes for 25 points, doesn't make a three in this game, weirdly enough, but still ends up at 25. And if you didn't see the game, I'm going to put the clip right here. He makes the game ceiling, the series clinching defensive play on the final possession because LeBron had the ball in his hands on the final shot. And I thought it was a great play by Darvin Ham. They started him on the opposite block. He comes curling around the key, grabs the ball. And now he's headed downhill with his left hand. I know LeBron's a right-handed shooter. Maybe a lot of you guys don't know. LeBron is actually left-handed. So he's comfortable with that going to the rim. It looks like he has his man, at least I think it was Aaron Gordon. It looks like he has Aaron Gordon in a position where he wants him. LeBron had been driving to the rim effectively all night long. Murray rotates over, gets his hands on the ball, clamps LeBron, so when he jumps up, he has to go back down. And then by the time he goes back up, he has nowhere to go. The Nuggets end up winning the game because of that. The Nuggets only played seven players in this game, seven-man rotation. Now, I expect them to go back to eight, potentially even nine in the NBA Finals, in the early games at least. But Christian Brown, he was eliminated from the lineup here. Obviously, we know DeAndre Jordan doesn't play. Um, there are other guys, Thomas Bryant, I mean, do you, whoever you want to pick at, Zeke Naji. none of them were playing. The only people off the bench who appeared were Jeff Green and Bruce Brown. And then the five starters, all five starters, by the way, in double figures. Another great balanced team effort from the Nuggets. They proved that they were the better composite, complete team in this series. I think there's no doubt about that. And I'm really looking forward to see what they're going to offer in the finals against probably the Miami Heat potentially the Boston Celtics, but most likely not since they are also in a 3 nothing hole. This is the first time since 2015 that both conference finals uh, win, not winners, but pole position sitters have been up 3-0 in their series. Had to find a way to say that. Wasn't quite sure what to go with. I was a little annoyed with the refs early in this game. It really seemed like they came out with Nuggets money line in the first quarter, and then maybe they live bet the Lakers money line in the second quarter. It's it just no consistency with the calls. We get to the third quarter. Jokic starts flopping his butt off. I'm going to put up another clip right here, which I recorded on my phone, so that's why it's bad quality. But look at Jokic, man. He knows Schroeder has two fouls. He wants to get him to pick up his third, and he just collapses to the ground. I I mean, come on, best player in the world, no doubt, but come on, come on, got to be better than that. Um, the, the the Lakers really blew this game. They went into halftime with, a I believe, a 15-point lead, either 15 or a 16-point lead. The Nuggets come out, and they win the third quarter 36-16. to 16. And I can't say enough about the Nuggets in these playoffs, man. They've won games 97-87. to 87. They've won games where they've scored over 130 points. They've been ahead, and they've won big. They've been ahead, and they won close. They've been behind, and they've come, come back. They're undefeated at home. They just won two games on the road, and they won a big game on the road in the Phoenix Sun series after they were 19 and 22 on the road in the regular season. Really, they are just rounding into shape in every way at the perfect time. Michael Malone has always been a good coach, but he's really proven his worth in these playoffs. They look like a really good team. And I mean, they're the, they were the number one seed in the Western Conference. But let's be honest, that hasn't meant a ton in recent years. I mean, when the Bucks were the number one seed, sure. When the Warriors were the number one seed, sure. When the Lakers, sure. But we've seen teams like 
the Utah Jazz and the Houston Rockets be at the top of the standings and nobody's picking them to go to the finals. We saw, I mean, the most classic example is when Al Horford and Paul Millsap were leading the Atlanta Hawks to the number one seed and then they get absolutely annihilated by the Cavs. So not always a representation of what's going to come in the postseason, but the Nuggets are making good on their regular season resume. Uh, as we move ahead, I don't think we have a whole lot else to talk about here. Um, I can just go over the final play one more time real quick in case you missed it. Actually, what I will do is I'll go over the Lakers' penultimate offensive possession where they have the rock with about 50 seconds left. They go down, and with 31 seconds left, they still haven't taken a shot. LeBron took way too long to get the team into an action, and the ball ends up squirting out of bounds. And LeBron has a chance to put the shot up. It claims off the side of the backboard because he was falling out of bounds. It was a desperation shot at the end of the clock. They get the stop on Jamal Murray. Great defense by Dennis Schroeder. And then, like I mentioned earlier, we all know what happens on the final shot. LeBron comes off the curl, headed downhill with his left hand. He gets double teamed, has nowhere to go with the ball. Season is over. I didn't like the fact that there weren't any secondary cuts. A lot of ball watching by the Lakers. The only person who was open was Anthony Davis on the three-point line, and that's probably the worst shot in that situation aside from a Tristan Thompson three-point shot. Look, the Nuggets, they were the better team in the series. I believe they still have the best net rating in these playoffs. They look really good. Jokic is just out of his mind. Um, let's. You know what? I'm going to go look at his game log right here. So this is Jokic in the playoffs, 30, 14, and 13. 24, 6, and 8, by far his worst game in the playoffs. 23, 7, and 12. 34, 21, and 14. 32, 10, and 12. 29, 13, and 12. 53, 11, and 4. 30, 17, and 17. 39, 16, and 5. 24, 19, and 5. And I won't even go over the first series in which he had a 43-point double-double. I he has just been out of his mind. He already passed Will Chamberlain for most triple-doubles in the playoffs by any position, not just a center, although it's fitting that it was Will. He, his game is at an entirely different level. Now, moving into these, the NBA Finals, I think the Heat do have the better matchup for Jokic and Bam Adebayo because he's very, he's very big and strong, obviously, but then he's also versatile. And yes, it's going to help when he can switch on to other people, but he also has the ability to sort of match Jokic's skill set because Jokic is very unorthodox. He does a lot of things that centers aren't usually prepared for. Bam has the quickness, the strength, the size, the speed to deal with all of it. Not that he's going to stop him, but he's going to be just about as good a matchup as anybody in the league. Going into this series, I was saying Anthony Davis has given Jokic more problems than anyone in the league. And while Jokic was held to a measly 50% from the field when he was at 63% in the regular season, Jokic was clearly superior to Anthony Davis. So if it is the Heat, good luck, Bam, and good luck to the Heat. I do want to see the Heat and the Nuggets. I know that it's not the sexy pick. I know that there's been a lot of complaining on Twitter from the narrative fans that it's not the NBA Finals they want to see. Those two teams are playing the best basketball in the league at the exact right time. We are going to get a showdown of Jimmy Butler's first ring versus Jokic's first ring. And also the Denver Nuggets. This is our first ever Finals appearance. Are they going to get their first ring as a franchise? It's going to be super exciting to see. I am super locked in. Before we head out of here, I'm going to go ahead and give you a betting pick for the Celtics versus the Heat because I did not do that um, over the weekend because, again, it was getting a little inked up. Just pulling up the line right now to make sure that it hasn't moved since the last time I checked. Okay, yeah, we've got the Boston Celtics plus one and a half, the Heat minus one and a half. If tonight was any indication... I think the Celtics are going to show some fight, especially given they didn't in game three. Although I weirdly feel that the Lakers, even though they were just swept, I think they are more resilient than the Celtics. So if the Celtics are going to win, same thing with LeBron having a huge night. It's going to be a big Tatum night. Jalen Brown has been absolutely atrocious in these playoffs. Uh, we're going to talk about that actually on my podcast with Tanner Kern called Ride the Line. We're going to talk about some potential Jalen Brown trades. Imagine the world in which he does get traded. I don't personally think he will, but we're just going to imagine some situations where he does. Jalen Brown's been awful. Al Horford said he was an elite shooter and then couldn't buy a bucket. Gabe Vincent apparently is the best player in the in the series. Oh, man, the Celtics are plus 100, the Heat at minus 118 on the money line. I'm trying to make my pick right now, to be honest. You know what? The Heat haven't lost at home. I don't trust Joe Missoula. I would say very cautiously go with the heat on the money line. Not entirely sure, and I wouldn't necessarily advise it because I think it's a free hit for the Celtics the same way that I didn't bet on tonight's game between the Lakers and the Nuggets. I'm probably not going to bet on the Celtics and the heat because this could be a Tatum 40, 50-point masterclass. 
But if you're asking for my bet, what I would say, I would go with the Miami Heat money line at minus 118. Guys, make sure that you have liked the video. If you haven't already, drop a comment. Again, let me know what you think of Jokic right now. Let me know if you think that he is on the best playoff run ever. Subscribe, like the video, repeating myself right now. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, save you guys the time. Have a great day.